everybody should go and shower. So everybody went. Then after some time, I, I was in the room. We, we stay in dormitory. So I was in the room. It's normal. They would just be calling people one by one. Even in the midnight, they would come and call people. Uh, Baba wants to see you. Papa wants to see you. So I was called. Then I went. And it's like the moment I enter his room, he just, you know, hug you. Well done. You know, I know you can do it. And that well done became they put uh, his mouth in my hand and asked me to suck it again. again. And I did it. And, uh, well, I don't know. So, I, I, that continued. That continued. Then I realized that before T.B. Joshua go into service, he must call one girl, two girl, and have sex with them. Even without taking his shower, he just from there he would just go into the, into the service. I don't know why he's doing that. And immediately he come back, you know, girls will, he will call them. Even some are willing. Say, you know, Baba is calling me, they are happy. But within myself, I, I was, you know, these are the things that made me to believe that all this is joke. And not only that, I saw that, you know, I was always behind camera. We arrange miracles. People, yeah. If sick people come into synagogue, they don't do anything until the camera crew gets there. Yeah, because we have to take the before and the after. We work hand in hand with the people that organize this uh, emergency department. They are the ones that will psych people. If it's coming, just be crying. Help me, help me be crying. You, you know, they want to relieve what's happened in the Bible. And he himself will pretend as if he didn't see them. Why all along he knew that they are there? Because the people in the department must have told him that this is the place we have arranged this person. This is what the person has said during interview. So that when it's a, a prophecy time, he can give them the same thing, information we have already sold to him. So most of the disciples are informants. But I want to go back quickly to that, uh, you know, um, encount that intimate uh, part. Okay. Uh, you know, was it only sucking that he does? Or does he also do proper intercourse? Yeah. So, you know, as time goes on, uh, I see that uh, he tried to unite few girls together. And he, he told us that you are sisters, you know. And these girls, I will mention their name, Elizabeth, Rose. This Rose and Elizabeth, they are, they are siblings. Hmm. He doesn't care. Even mother and child, he, 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 he do them. So, and Kemi, Kemi Adelokiki, and Bosa Adelokiki. Bosa is on the choir. You see them singing, they are just pretending. So and I I am I empathize with them. Where are those people now? They are there. They are still in the yeah. in this. Okay. Yes. They are still there. So, you know, uh, and also another one, another person, Bolaji, Bolaji and uh, Sheun Abiola. He got us in the room. He will be naked. He will be having sex with one. Other people, they will be drawing his leg, his, you know, rubbing his, massaging him. So these are the things we do there. These are the things I participated. At what point did you decide to break away? Okay. Um, it happened seven, when I was seven years in the synagogue. I start seeing that, uh, I start dreaming. I started to dream. My dreams were horrific. It, you know, I, I have gift of dream. Yeah, so I, I started seeing that uh, in the night, there was one day I saw, T, I saw T.B. Joshua wearing black. He, he does wear black sometimes. So wearing black. And some people, four people, 
they too they wore black and they they they, they are like pal bearer they they carry one uh, uh dead body and that body they carried was also robed in black so I saw some disciples, you know, some girls' disciples that I, I could remember, like Anne, like Rose, like Anu, you know, they too, they wear black with red uh, handkerchief. So then I saw them going. Then at a point, they now asked Anu to stay somewhere. So they went in. Even there was a time, that's one dream. Another dream I saw was that it was leading us into a groove, into the bush, thick forest. So we were on a straight line. So when it got to a point, I saw one man. He just came in between me and Taye. Taye was in front of me, and he just pushed me. You know, he was struggling with me. So uh, me too, I was struggling because I didn't want him to take my, uh, my position. So he just pushed me, and I fell on the floor. While I was sitting, I was looking at them. They went into the bush, and at a time, I saw that they enter into a kind of uh, uh, a kind of hall, and within split second, dead bodies were carried out of the room. As we speak, those people that I saw in those dreams, they are not living today. Hmm. Yes, even Taye was among those people that died in the collapse. In the building collapse. Yeah, in the building collapse. So I just thank God that somebody, you know, someone pushed, that you out I know pushed me out of. Maybe I would have just been part of it. So then I saw a lot of, even there was a time I had a dream. And in the synagogue, T.B. Joshua has already indoctrinated the disciples. Anytime you have dream. Because he believe that most of them are gifted. So anytime anybody has dream, it is an offense if you don't report your dream. So when I started having all these dreams, I stopped, I, I, I stopped reporting. Because something happened to Bosse Agbairi. Bosse Agbaire saw T.B. Joshua under the marine, under the water, kneeling down to some creatures with half fish, half body, asking them for power and help. So that was the last time Bosse dreamt. So, you know, because I know that, I didn't report my dream again. So I saw one day that I was, I saw a lady, you know, maybe by the gutter, very dirty. So I just took pity on the lady and I took uh, clothes, I mean, yeah, sponge and water, washing the lady. So after washing one side, I asked her to turn the other side. The moment it turned like this, it was my face I saw on her face. That shock woke me that something is happening where I am. I saw mighty snake crawling from outside into T.B. Joshua's bedroom. So a lot of things I saw and I've been so afraid. So when the visitors started coming into the synagogue, I was called upon to be coordinating them. So if visitors come, uh, when they started coming, T.B. Joshua will pack a lot of videos and give them that they should go to different countries to go and distribute the videos. He will give them money. He will pay their flight ticket. He will ask them, bring more people, white people, your type. He doesn't like black people visiting him. So white, white, why bring them? When they come, they eat free of charge. At that time, they eat free of charge. He told us in the meeting that he knows what he's doing. He's just using baits to bring them closer. That later, because... Some of the disciples will say that, oh, you are giving them. Say, don't worry. If you want to do, if you want to catch a monkey, you 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 behave like a monkey. So you know, you normally give them money to come back. So they will come back. So when I started coordinating visitors, anytime they come, some people, some of them ask, can they bring sick people? Say, oh, of course, you know, healing. But after they started bringing some sick people that he couldn't heal. You know, he couldn't use to deceive people to heal. If he said you have, you know, you have a spiritual problem, of course, he will wave his hand. Nobody knows if you are healed or not. You understand? So, uh, we, we, you know, the people in testimony department, they will ask the person, don't worry, just go and give testimony. You know, immediately after giving testimony, you see that, you know, things were. So those people will say, hey, I was having so, so, but now they are praying for me. Now I'm here. So 
but you that you are watching, you don't know if they are healed or not. A lot of people died of HIV because they, you just do like this. Don't take drugs again. So they will just be dying. And uh, anytime they bring maybe cripple, that is when the trouble comes. So one day, Pastor Neil Labaskokne from South Africa brought some sick people. And uh, two cripple was among. And uh, when they came, he was not happy with me because I'm their coordinator. We, we exchange correspondence before they come. They tell me the people they are co that they are coming with. So, and when they came at the airport, the, the protocol officers has already called him that they, there are two cripples among them. He called me into the office. As I was just entering the office, it was dirty slap he gave me. So why don't you tell, why do you uh, ask them to come with cripple? I said, I don't know. I've already, you know, told them that it's people that are coming for spiritual empowerment. No cripple or, you, you understand? So that time, that day, I was unhappy. And I said, I want to go home. He was not happy. He said, you said that to me? I said, I want to go home. I just stand, I want to go home. So he used his finger to mark the floor that if I have two heads, I should pass and go. Because I was not happy. You know, I just, you know, went. At that time, three days, I was just roaming around Lagos. I don't know where I was going. Until I returned back there. So when I returned back there, and I said, you, you are threatening me, you want to go. Okay, go and give confession. Until you give confession, you will not come back. Because I, I, I was not even myself. So, I, well, what is confession? Okay, I was stubborn, I was this, I was that. Okay, okay, go back to work. So, because, you know, I was leaders of different departments. And I went back to work. And, you know, all those things, you know, continued, continued. Then when different, you know, we go to Singapore, we go to Indonesia. I went with them, you know. I have passport to show that. And, uh, you know, to some countries. It's all managing. You know, we go to Okobaba in uh, Onyibo to give food to the beggars. We carry camera along. Whereas in the, in the book of Matthew, Matthew 6 1. He said, if you want to do good, you do it secretly so that you not shame the, the poor people. But we have to face them with camera. Why do we face them with camera? Because we use this video to deceive the foreigners that, you know, we are into philanthropies and those people start keying key into it. They start, you know, putting money, donating heavily. I remember when we went to Singapore. Personally, I collected a million dollar. Through donations. Through donations. I'm not talking about other disciples that were in the same, you know, uh, circle of that department. Because when we travel... So what year did you leave? I left 2008. I never, and since then, I never looked back. If so when you left in 2008, you, you knew your way around Lagos that time? Unlike the, the, the previous time. Okay. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so when I, I just, you know, I, you know, in the synagogue, people are not allowed to get married. You see those girls, they are in the, you know, they've been there 20 years, you know, over 20 years, they are not allowed to get married. That's a question people should start asking. If these people are your sisters. How about why? men? And How about the men, men too must not get married. Hmm. If you married and you come into the synagogue, the marriage will be separated. I have this in this book. You know, you know, I wrote this book. And uh, go online, Google. T.B. Joshua uh, took my wife and sent me to exile. You know, okay, because people will say, why Bisola only talking? It's not only Bisola only talking. Other people are talking. You understand? But my tenacity is just, you know, my energy is higher than them because I, I have passion for people. I know what I went into. 
and I don't pray for my even my anybody that I think. So back to how you left now. Okay. So by the time I was ready, you know, I think he saw the sign that uh, this girl is no more around here. There was a time he sent me to go and be the MD of uh, his uh, newspaper outfit. They call it exclusive in uh, in Ikeja. That was the first outside job I would ever do when I entered the synagogue. Because he said the person who was the MD mismanaged the money. So he called the meeting of professional journalists and said, I, I have somebody that will, that, will, that will be in charge of that place. And you people, you respect her. So they normally take me with car to, to that place. So I asked them, what is the problem here? They say it's because of money, no fund. This guy is not funding them. I said, okay, fine. Then I collated all his friends that are rich. So I took the paper there with some gift. I said, T.B. Joshua said, you should key into it this. So they started giving, um, no, they started giving adverts. Okay. And that money we use printing every week. And that money we use, you know, uh, paying salaries. And, you know, no, no problem. But one day he called me. Say, come, 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 come. Where are you? I said, I'm in Abuja. So, uh -uh. Who did you tell you are going to Abuja? He felt uh, scared and threatened that, you know, of developing wings. One day he called me. I said, I'm with uh, Iyabo Obasanjo in Abelkuta. <laughs> you know? So after some time, he asked me to, to step down. He asked somebody else. After three, mini, three months or four months, they closed down that place because. The, the person did not know how I was, you know, Money. going around. But when I was there, I met somebody called Baba Prince Awofisayo. His friend to T.B. Joshua. He's one of those people that were giving us adverts. And, you know, I always tell Baba Awofisayo, please, introduce me to some people. He, he, he was the one that introduced me to Yabo uh, Obasanjo. Um, so he knew that I was, you know, I, I was thirsty to work. I was hungry to work. So when I was ready, because I had no friends outside, no parents outside. So uh, what I did was that I contacted Baba Wolf Sayo. I said, sir, I've been here for the past 14 years and it's like I want to move forward. Because the man did not know what was going on there. He said, ah, well, well, well. I know you can do better on your own. You know, don't worry. Immediately you leave. I promise you five million bank guarantee. I said, I don't have a house. He gave me 500,000. And the day I went to collect that money, somebody saw me in the, in the Baba's office and reported to T.B. Joshua. And that was how their problem started. But somehow the Baba managed, you know, and asked me to stay away. So I had that for my accommodation. You know, I was preparing to leave. Then... One day, T.B. Joshua and his crew member, disciples, they went to South Africa for farmers' conference. So when they got there, camera got had problem. And it's like they couldn't use camera to cover the event. And, you know, he's a camera guy. When they came back, they called me in. I was in trouble because I didn't follow them. He said, if Bisola were there, things would have worked well. So all the people, including the white girls and the white guy, and including me, he said, because anytime you offend T.B. Joshua, you, he will say you have offended God. So people will just be, you know, you know, moody and sober and, you know, uh, people will go on hunger strike. Hey, they have offended God. He has told us that God do not know we are living. He's the one that wants to reconcile us with God. So he was the God. He was everything, everything center around him. So he said we should go and pray that we have offended. So we now got together. We went to Agodo. You don't know Agodo. They call it prayer mountain. He has it around Egbe, away from synagogue, you know. So that place is swampy area, but you drag it. It's full of water. Then he puts a uh, beach sand around it. So we're there. While we were praying, in a split second, I saw my mom. Seriously. 
she had grown so aged and frail. And for the first time in many years, I was concerned for her. So immediately we got back to the synagogue. You know, they, they, took, they used bus to drop us and they came to pick us again. Immediately we got back to synagogue. I went to his office. I said, I saw my mom in a vision. He trivialized it that you, you see vision. Go, go back to your work, you know. They are waiting for you in the studio. The visitors are somewhere there, you know. I would not go back to work. I was standing in front of his office. He finished till midnight. He went to his, to his room upstairs. So when I couldn't go to sleep because I was thinking that I need to go and see my mom. And Sunday is the best bet. I've left home for many years. My mom must have moved from where I know her house to be. But I know her church. You understand? Before I was born, my mom has been a member of that church. And she has been there. I think if I go to that church, they will, they will find her. So I went to T.B. Joshua's room, bedroom upstairs, five story. I was standing outside. So he was seeing some people. So immediately they finished with him. That they, they were filing out. As they opened the door, he saw me. and said, ah, Bessala, what happened? So then I entered into his room. I said, I need to go and see my mom. I don't know what's going on. Then he, he caught some people. That's how they normally do. They will call people around you to break you. You know, mentally and psychologically. So people were saying, ah, ah where is your mom on this side? This, that your mom that is a witch. I said, thank you. I need to see her. See my witch. I need to see my witch. I don't know what enter me. I just say I need to see my witch. So he, he now asked me why tomorrow when everybody will be busy uh, at work. I said because of so so that I've mentioned. So he now said, okay, we talk from twelve midnight to three a.m. He now said, okay, I should get prepared that we should go to the mountain. If it were before, I would be happy to go, but I just don't want to. You know, because I've seen a lot of things, you know, I didn't even know the in-depth at that time, as I know now. So, but I know things are not, you know, are not in shape. So, I, then I just say, I'm not going. I went to bed. So, by six, I've already, while people were dressing for service, me, I was dressing to go out. So, the moment I dressed, I came down, I saw him by the stairs. So, he was coming back from the mountain because... At night before uh, service, he normally go alone there. So I saw him coming. So I greeted him. Either he answered, he didn't answer. My mind was made up. I need to. So, but because disciples don't go out alone, immediately I was crossing the road. The security stopped me. But I fought them. I said, no, no, no. no. I quickly climbed on one Okada. And the Okada took me. So I was... In the, uh, you know, on the streets, I left there around after six. It was around 10. Mr. Ojoloye called me and said, I, I learned you are no longer in the quarters. Where are you? I said, I'm going to Ibadan, but I don't know where I am. So the man said, where are you now? So I asked somebody, where is this place? They said, Obalende. I said, ah, all the way from Mikotun. He said, okay, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Ibadan. So he said, okay, just follow my direction. Take a bus to either Yaba or Joelegba. So I waited. When I got to Joelegba, I asked people, where are they going to Ibadan? Under the bridge at that time. So I enter. And by the time, I, so, something wants to reoccur that day. I will have lost it. But thank God for that call of that man. So when I got to Ibadan, I went to her church. And true, true, the way I saw her in that split second, her husband died, you know, things has gone wrong, you know, blah, blah, blah. They have moved from their house, you know. So, you know, they called her out of the church and she was just crying. I said, Mama, it's okay. Don't embarrass me. Can we go home? She took me to a new place. So when we got there, I knelt down and I begged her. I prostrated. I said, I'm so sorry that I was, I was pushed to, you know, to, to say what I said. So she said, no problem. Yeah, now you are back. No problem. No problem. So the money I had on me, I gave her. 
So I said, Mama, I have concern and I need to leave that place. Ah, Mama said, ah, the time we want you to leave, you know, you have spent all your youth in that place. So I said, I still want to leave. She said, what happened? I said, no, I was not ready to, you know, start explaining. I just said, I want to. What my mom, mother did, he gave me a phone number of a pastor. He said, because in their church, they don't do things on their own. They ask cancel from the spirit of god i said okay i took the number and i went back so when i got to the synagogue that day they wanted to harass me the security wanted to harass me that i didn't get past before i enter so me too i was ready i said okay come you know i had one five hundred thousand somewhere <laughs> so i said please come let me go in and take my bag you know blah 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 so the why we were dragging that Olamide came, Olamide Big came and said, uh, Tibi Joshua was calling me. So we went back to the mountain. So when we got there, I was alone with him in the room. He said, he asked me not to go somewhere. And I went. I said, because of the way I saw her. So she, he now asked me, what happened in Ibadan? Because I've known him. You understand? I started take, you know, taking his word with a pinch of salt. I knew he wanted to teleguide me. So I told him, I said, my mother said she doesn't want to see me. Mm. So that gave him peace of mind. He asked Olamide, take her back to the, the uh, synagogue. You know, I don't want to say church because that, that place is not church. Take her back and tell the leaders that no problem. So I, was, I went back. I went back to the room, you know. No, I continue my... But, because the number I had was with me. And the phone, I bought a phone sometime when I was in exclusive. I hid it because at that time, disciples were not allowed to own phone. So I had it on me. So what I did was that in the, the second day, and now I was just, you know, strolling around, around the synagogue area. I put the phone in my pocket and put earpiece. So they thought maybe I was just listening to message, you know, because you have to listen to his message over and over again. But I was communicating with that pastor. I've already died the number. So I was talking to him. I said, oh, good morning, sir, you know. So he greeted me. He said, how are you? I said, I'm fine. I said, uh, sir, I would like to um, talk to you. I want to seek counsel on the 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 move i want to take so he said ah please can we pray so we prayed so the moment we finished praying the man asked me one question where are you because i didn't want to mention synagogue because i know how people outside some people outside feel about the place so you know i said he shouldn't worry that you know i just want to take a decision he said oh he's sorry that why he asked me where I was, was that while we were praying, he saw that my two hands and legs were in chain and my neck and waist, there was a chain around my waist. That scared me. I said, I'm in the synagogue, sir. <laughs> so the man said, uh -uh, quietly, the man said, what are you doing there? I said, it's a long story I can't tell you now. So the man, the, uh, then I told the man, I said, that is why I'm calling you. I like to leave this place. The man said, ah, you can't leave. Oh. I said, why? You know, I got upset because, you know, we are, I'm trying to leave and you still want to. He said, you cannot leave. I said, why? He said, ah, if God open your eyes to see some being that I'm seeing now, if you pass through them, Hey, all your names, all the names of the people that are living there, they are already with them that they are monitoring them. You are under watch. Ha. I said, which watch? He said, you, you are under their radar. I look around. I said, where is the radar? I know there is CCTV, but you know, the, the, what he's saying is like spiritual thing. So I said, well, uh, me, I need to go. He said, ah, I said, as you are talking now, I'm walking out. He said, if you go, you will die. I calmed down because as he said that, I remember what happened seven years back. 
So I now said, what should I do? I don't want to die. And I know where I am is not of God. I want to go to heaven. So the man said, we will seek counsel from God. But you have to calm down. Anytime you have service in that place, anytime there is congregational service, you must call me. Because before, these are the man's word though. Before the service, there is a sacrifice they perform. So everybody is under a web. So we need to pray to remove that thing from you. So we start praying. We start praying. So someday, the man will ask me, do you people usually eat together? I said, yes. He said, because he saw that they, were give, they, they, give, they normally give you something in form of food, but it's not food. Every two, two weeks, they kill uh, ram in the synagogue and they, they give us. So he said I should stop eating. So anytime I go to the meeting where they want to share it, is either I collect mine, I flush it, or I give it to a long throat person. I just dash them out. People always want it. You can even collect food that will last you three days. So then I stop walking. I will always stay in the room. Ask, where's Bisola? She's in the room. What happened? She's complaining of headaches. Because, you know, I'm becoming irritated with, you know, staying behind. He will come into the room, if he's truly a prophet. He's supposed to know that I was not sick. He'll come into the room to lay hands on me. So, me too, I will just say, okay, okay. They say, oh, okay, take her to the shower, let her shower. So I was just, you know, doing that. Do you know that we prayed for three months? Mm -hmm. Then I asked the man one day, I said, which portion of the Bible should I be reading? The man said, don't bother to read Bible because where you are, heaven is not open. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, sometimes if the man just talk, you know, some profound words, I, will, I look up, I say, heaven is not open. 